going electric. EVs are taking charge of the roads. But as weather authority meteorologist Jordan Patrick shows us, one roadblock these drivers should think about is what they'll do in a hurricane. South Florida is getting charged up. They may be silent rides, but their presence speaks volumes. But with the surprising number of new owners, many have never gone through a hurricane with their electric car. So that begs the question, how exactly should you prepare with an EV? If I have power at home, I'm going to drive it as normal. Take it, go do our errands, whatever. If streets aren't flooded, get home and be able to charge it at night. Tesla owner Dan Bruderlin shows us the biggest advantage to owning an EV. Home charging. I bought the FPL charger. Meaning when a storm comes, no need to wait in long lines at the gas station or deal with fuel shortages after a storm. And every day I get home from work, I plug this one in and it starts to charge automatically at 9 or 10 p.m. off peak hours. And when I wake up in the morning, the car's fully charged. That all sounds good, but what if you're told to evacuate? Well, a prime concern for EVs is having the range to get to your destination. A fear experts say is not a pressing issue for a few reasons. You don't have to go hundreds of miles. Safety could be just 10 miles away from where you live today. Kevin Guthrie is the executive director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management. The one thing that we would ask people to do starting in hurricane season is keep their electric charges as full as possible um, as they move around about their day. Jonathan Sanchez is the tech lead and director of operations at EV Garage Miami. He says when a storm is approaching, EV manufacturers will often issue software updates to increase your range. So if you are just sitting on the highway and you're stuck in traffic, you know, you are still losing range uh, as you would in a traditional gas car. That extended battery life can help you evacuate. So you can charge the vehicle and get much further uh, in times of crisis. In the event your EV does need a little extra juice. The Florida Department of Transportation in conjunction with FPL are working on a multi-year project to add more charging stations to evacuation routes. Last season, FPL introduced this mobile charging station that they can bring to hard hit areas to get EV drivers moving. But don't be fooled, these are not toy car batteries by any stretch. For anyone worried about range issues, <laughs> the battery is literally the size, of the, the size of the car. And some newer models are even taking it one step further. There's a, uh, an EV vehicle that might be dead on the road with no charge. One that has bi-directional charging can come to you, uh, give you a boost and help you continue on your way. Another concern with EVs is deep water. All of these high-tech rides are designed with safety measures to avoid disaster. This pyrofuse is designed literally to pretty much pop with a small little pyrotechnic device, and that'll uh, essentially break the physical connection of the battery, the high voltage battery, to the rest of the vehicle to contain that energy again in the battery packs. There are pros and cons to both EVs and internal combustion engines during a hurricane scenario. But for Dan, he knows when a storm comes, his Tesla just needs to be juiced up. If a hurricane is coming, my thoughts are I was going to charge it up to 100%, which is more than I normally do just to commute every day back and forth to work. And if the streets are dry enough, I will drive it as long as I can get home to charge it or get to a supercharger to charge it. And remember, in the event of a power outage or an evacuation, there are plenty of apps that'll highlight charging stations near you or along your route. Most EVs have charging station locations built into their navigation systems, and some, like this one, can even tell you how long wait times are. We'll be right back. 